October 27th, 2022. Good evening, dear faithful viewers of Camdis Television. This is the 6 p.m. news. We begin right away with our major stories. Last honors have been paid to late Senator Adakole Daisala by his colleagues of the Upper House of Assembly. The ceremony took place this October 27, 2022 at the Yawunde Conference Center presided by the Senate President Marcel Nyat Defenji. A health personnel at the Quaker Akart Lake Mission Hospital in Fumban, West Region of Cameroon, have allegedly committed suicide by hanging himself on the ceiling of his room with the help of a bedsheet tied round his neck. It is reported that it is his own wife who alerted the population. Heads of establishments of Inyej teachers in Konsamba, Mongo Division of the Little Region of Cameroon have attended this October 27, 2022, a training workshop on procedures related to registration process. Those were headlines developments in a moment. Thanks once more for joining us, dear viewers, who begin right away with our obituary page where the former Minister of State's National President of the Movement for the Defense of the Republic, Senator Daiko Odaisala, has received a last homage from his colleagues at the Senate of this October 27th at the Yaoundé Conference Center. The ceremony was presided by the President of Senate, Nyat Jifenji. A reporter Bertrand Tita and Black Elomo were there and profiles him in this report. Let's watch. Dakole Dai Sala, born 15 April 1943, gave up the ghost on 9 August 2022 as a result of brief illness, was a Cameroonian politician and the president of the Movement for the Defense of the Republic, MDR, a political party based in Cameroon's far north region. He served in the government of Cameroon as Minister of State for Post and Telecommunication from 1992 to 1997. Subsequently, he was a deputy in the National Assembly from 1997 to 2002 and then Minister of Transport from 2004 to 2007. He was appointed Senator in 2013 and served the state in that capacity before his demise. His memory and good deeds remains fresh in the upper house and the government of Cameroon. Big loss even to the Senate, like one of the big brands, one of the think, um, tanks of the Senate, is gone. State person, a bureau member of the upper house, that you could get to him in, in times of crisis and get advice. Dakole Daisala, a native of Kaili in the far north region of Cameroon, suffered the aftermath of the failed April 6th coup and served seven years behind bars. A great loss to the entire family and the far north region as a whole. It was somebody who was so forgiving, so with a very good spirit, good advice, a father of the nation, very, very patriotic, as I said earlier. So I think Dakole Daisala was a father was a, an elder brother, was a dead man, and he told During the last honor accorded him by his colleagues of the Upper House of Assembly, presided by the President Marcel Nyat Jifenji, the former political guru is remembered for his drive for peace and development in Cameroon. His motor remain leaves Yaoundé on Friday, October 28th for Kaile in the far north region, where he will be laid to rest this Saturday, October 29th, 2022. We continue uh, right away. We move over to Ufumban to talk on how a, a medical doctor was reported to have committed a suicide in his room. The unfortunate incident occurred yesterday at Fontaine Quarters, uh, that is in Fumban, uh, west region of the country. Yesterday night, uh, that's Wednesday, October 26, 2022, breaking uh, this Thursday morning. With the help of the wife, uh, she alerted the neighbor 
were later on informed. The forces of law and order who went immediately on the side to see what exactly happened before this unfortunate incident. Let's move over to Fumban in this report. It is behind this closed door that the lifeless body of Jean-Claude Nkwoto, a doctor in service at the Nkweka Catholic Mission Hospital in Fumban, West region of Cameroon, was found in his residence at Fontaine Quarters, hanging from the ceiling with bedsheets tied around his neck. From credible sources, this unfortunate incident occurred around 2 a.m. on Wednesday, October 26th, a breaking Thursday morning. According to a close neighbor, Kares, the victim's partner and a servant in a local bar, knocked at his door, pleading for help. When he saw Kares with wounds all over her body, he decided to visit the room, only to discover her partner in an unspeakable position, dead and decided to report to the gendarmerie. Going by the said neighbor, while on their way, Kares, a partner to the deceased, Jean-Claude Nkoto, admitted they had a quarrel and fought. After informing the gendarmerie, they in turn alerted public prosecutors who immediately arrived the site and carefully carried away remains of Jean-Claude to the mortuary. The crowd in tears expressed regrets and so many questions left unanswered as to what might have caused the late doctor to commit a suicide. Kares, the victim's wife, is presently snatching teeth at the brigade while investigations are ongoing to know what exactly transpired leading to this ungodly act. From the sad page, uh, we move over to talk about education, but this time around, we move over to Kong Samba, that is in the Mongo division of the Litoa region of the country, where heads of establishments for uh, teachers in Inej uh, have attended a training a workshop on the procedures related to registration process. The workshop uh, took place uh, this October 27, 2022. Let's meet our reporter, Afo Gislein, as she came back from Dua. The multi-purpose room of the Higher Teachers Training College of Kontamba in the Mongo Division has served as a framework this October 27, 2022 for preparatory works towards the launch of registrations for the 2022-2023 exams. Several presentations characterize the exchange which allow the heads of the educational establishment to enable them better equip on the registration process the procedures related to registration, but above all, to revisit the shortcomings noted during the past school year. It was an opportunity to analyze the shortcomings of the last year and also give them the innovations put out by the IHAKI. It was also an opportunity for these officials to present to the participants the innovations for the current school year and to train them on the use of SPIDER 7.0, a tool for registering candidates with some observations made. We are expecting that with uh, these innovations, there will be no late registrations, no errors at the level of the names during registration of candidates and so that the documents reach the examination office on time so as to avow a lateness in the school calendar. The seminar saw an evaluation sequence to ensure that 2022-2023 examination sessions run smoothly. We remain in Kongsambara, away of the fight to end fraud stamps in the Mongo division intensifies with heads of schools and heads of health centers. The intensive fight eviction training was organized by the General Directorate of Taxis. Let's meet Gerard Nase as she tells us more in this report. Putting an end to fraud on stamping and training these participants on the use of the taxpayer account electronic procedure for stamping examination and competition sheets was the objective of this workshop in Konsamba, organized by the General Directorate of Taxes aimed at broadening the tax base. The training workshop was equally an opportunity to build the capacity of heads of schools and heads of health centers who took part in the dematerialization 
materialization of these procedures relating to their tax obligations. The exchanges allowed the participants to be better informed on the outline of these new procedures implemented for the management of examination and competition files in the Mongo Division. Changing the way of putting stamps on examination documents so now it is done online and because of that all the principals and uh, inspectors were supposed to know the new methodology the new methods so that is why we were being briefed on the new methodology that have been put in place by the as these participants expressed satisfaction, it is now left for them to support the tax services in the rightful processing of these entities. The Public Independent Conciliator for the Southwest Senator Dorothy Atambo Motaze has called on the youth in the Southwest to come together for work for peace and development of the region. She made this declaration during a workshop that was widely attended by youths from the different divisions and subdivisions of the Southwest region and she made it clear to them the different functions of her office. Petron Tita in this report. The Office of the Public Independent Conciliator and the Youths of the Southwest Region examining prospects of collaboration to enhance service delivery to users of the regional and local councils is the theme of this working session organized by Dorothy Atabong Motaze, the Public Independent Conciliator for the Southwest Region with Youths of the said region. The purpose of this workshop is clear. That the youths will be able to go on the field in an aggressive nature to inform the colleagues who are not here of the presence of this office. That is why I invited um, executives from the subdivisions, the divisions and the regions so that the whole region is covered. Considered leaders of tomorrow, these youths are expected to sensitize the entire region of the existence of such office. They are those who can bring a lot of change, if especially they go out and transmit information about the missions of this office to their collaborators. They are those who can be able to change the mindset of their friends, other youths, and even elders in the community. And I think that creating this platform of collaboration with them is going to enhance the spread and the sensitization of the missions of this office. The participants say it is imperative for them to actively take part in the development of the region and the peace crusaders. A lot of good initiative. Uh, Madam, the PIC did a wonderful initiative by inviting them. As you proceed, as you hear in the, the different exposés, we constitute about 70% of the working force on the Southwest region. So it's incumbent upon us, the youth, to move, to go into the hinterland and propagate this message. I think there was no better way for her to do it out of The meeting that brought together youth leaders from the divisions and subdivisions of the Southwest region, the governor of the region also saw the youth taking the commitment to work in collaboration with the office for the development of the region in particular and Cameroon as a whole. From the southwest region, we come down here to the central region where improved cassava settlings have been distributed to the population of Mona Atele. It is a way to see how to boost cassava production in the country. It is also aimed at seeing how to encourage and promote a cassava a production that will lead to cassava flour labeled Mona Atele flour. Our reporter Afushis Lane was her eyes and ears during the ceremony, and this is her report. In a quest to boost the agricultural production of cassava farming in the Monatele locality, the distribution of improved cassava seedlings have been handed over 
to the agricultural population by the mayor of that district. Over two tons of improved and other local varieties cultivated in the locality made up the products which were given. It is a special species which produces in great quantity and it can produce enough food for household and also that to be sold in the market. The distribution ceremony, which took place at the premises of the Monatile Town Hall in the presence of municipal councillors, local administrators, religious and traditional leaders, and women leaders, saw them receive a package of 100 kilograms of these seedlings with the charge to distribute them to their various associations. These cassava seedlings which we have received will help us to realize a bountiful harvest by 2023. These varied species given is so as to boost the production of cassava and also to encourage the fabrication of local cassava flour labeled made in Monatele. We want to see that by 2024-2025, Monatele can be able to produce her own local cassava flour in sufficient quantity which can enable us to produce bread. A favorable initiative accepted by the beneficiaries is one whom they have promised to make good use of it. We now move out of the country where there has been a demonstration lodged in Rome by human rights organizations kicking against the renewal of an agreement signed between Italy and Rome. This is an agreement that prohibits refugees and migrants from arriving European coast. These and other stories with Sherati Nasse. Human rights organizations have demonstrated in Rome against the renewal of an agreement between Italy and Libya to prevent migrants and refugees from reaching the European coast. The demonstrators claim human rights are blatantly violated in Libya, where migrants and refugees are trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea. According to the agreement, Italy was providing the Libyan Coast Guard with vessels and training to help them to tackle human trafficking and illegal immigration but NGOs say serious human rights abuses take place at the detention centers and are calling for the MOU to be revoked immediately unless the Italian government revokes it the agreement will automatically be renewed for three more years the U.S. Embassy has issued an alert warning of a possible attack on Saturday against large gatherings in northern Johannesburg to the South African government. In response, the South African presidency noted the U.S. terror alert was part of the U.S. government's standard communication to its citizens. The presidency said it was the responsibility of the South African security forces to ensure security and safety for all people in the country. A recall here that more than 1,000 South African troops have been fighting in neighboring Mozambique since July 2021, helping the army deal with armed jihadist groups that have been wreaking havoc for the past five years, killing 4,300 people and displacing a million. Dear viewers, uh, that was the package we had for you, a recap of our major stories. Last honours have been paid to late Senator Daikole Daisala, who passed away some time now. His colleagues were present at the Yaoundé Conference Centre to bid him farewell, and the ceremony was presided by the President of Senate, Nyat Jifenji. And over in Fumban, medical personnel have allegedly committed suicide by tying his neck and hanging on the ceiling. The wife said that they had an argument and that led to a fight. Investigations have been opened to know exactly what actually transpired that led to this ungodly act. And then we talk about uh, teachers uh, of Inej, uh, head teachers of Inej uh, that have attended a training workshop in Konsamba, that is in the Mongo division of the country, uh, to get more information on registration procedures. Thanks for watching, God willing. Monday we will be together. Goodbye.